Hello there, and welcome to Human Wi-Fi, where we connect on things that make us feel alive. The Beatles are one of the greatest music groups of all time. And I think this is true not just when looking at rock and roll or music in general, but from the perspective of the recent history of our culture. I've been a Beatles fan all my life. And whether you like their music or not, I want to share with you why I think the Beatles are special. So join me in three things I love about the Beatles. Number one, the Beatles can help you make new friends. The Beatles meant a lot to me in my childhood. I grew up in Mexico City, and I distinctly remember one morning, I must have been about seven years old. My father had recently bought one of their albums, The Blue Collection of Hits, 1967-1970. I was up early before anyone else. I saw the album, took out the vinyl, and chose a song where the letters of the title called my attention. It was back in the USSR. That's the very first Beatles song I purposely played on my own. And that's where everything started. In school, being interested in the Beatles allowed me to make new friends. Around that time, I started learning the piano. And soon I joined other friends who played guitar and drums. We had a band at school, and we used to play songs like Let It Be or Hey Jude. Music is a wonderful glue that connects us and helps us find things in common with other people. This is true whether we are teenagers or adults. Many of my lifelong friends are people with whom I've shared music, even to this day. Now, I know it is possible to share almost any type of music, but the Beatles are special simply because they are so well known that if I start singing a song like Yesterday, you will probably know it too. And so we will be able to sing along together. Even if we are complete strangers, by the time the song is finished, we won't be strangers anymore. We'll now have something in common and we'll be able to get by with a little help from each other. I still make new friends thanks to the Beatles. Recently, my family met another family, related to our son's school, and we went to their house one evening. I didn't know the husband at all, but during dinner, we both mentioned we played music. Then he asked me, do you like the Beatles? I just smiled. Next thing we knew, it was two in the morning, and we were still playing and singing. In a sort of reverse father-son exchange, my son came and asked me, Dad, can we go home, please? I just said, let me play one more. Number two, the Beatles evolved over time. Many musicians lock into a style or a niche, and then they find it really difficult to change it. Think of somebody like Elvis Presley. The king of rock and roll created great music and became extremely famous. Yet he struggled to evolve his music. By the time he died in 1977, Elvis was basically still playing the same songs he was playing in the 1950s. This is true for other famous musicians as well. The evolution of the Beatles was incredible. They picked up rock and roll on one side and they delivered modern rock on the other. Their first songs were relatively simple. Just compare an album like A Hard Day's Night with the music they were making in the White Album or in Abbey Road. They went from, she loves you, yeah, 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 to, I want you, I want you so bad. Their music evolved with their age, with their personalities, and with the times. When the band broke up in 1970, their music had changed beyond recognition and had splintered in many different directions. If we think of the music that exploded in the 1970s and the 1980s, prog rock, hard rock, pop music, even disco, it is possible to trace back the origins of that music to things the Beatles were doing while they were transitioning from Love Me Do to Helter Skelter. Let me give you an example. The Mellotron is a kind of synthesizer that became a hallmark of prog rock in the early 1970s. It was widely used by groups like Genesis or King Crimson. You can hear a Mellotron in the song Stairway to Heaven. Well, those same sounds were used by the Beatles before anyone else in songs like Strawberry Fields Forever. Now, I'm not saying that the Beatles were the only group to evolve. Indeed, other groups had evolutions. Groups like Genesis went from prog rock to pop. Rush had an amazing career for over 40 years. Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits or the pianist Bruce Hornsby, they play jazz today. I mean, this is also true for Mozart and Beethoven and Miles Davis. The work of great artists emerges, flourishes, evolves and matures over time. I guess my point is that the Beatles did this in an extreme way in a very short period of time. In no more than six or seven years, we start with, I want to hold your hand, 
And the Beatles take us on a journey through psychedelia, spirituality, hard rock, nostalgic ballads, creating songs along the way like Tomorrow Never Knows, A Day in the Life, and Come Together. And by doing this, through their creative output, by experimenting and trying new things, they opened the door that allowed the development of wonderful forms of music that have influenced the last 50 years and will continue to reverberate in the future. In a recent book by Craig Brown called One, Two, Three, Four, The Beatles in Time, there is a chapter that describes the day the Beatles played for the first time in the Ed Sullivan Show in New York City in 1964. That show was watched by about 60 million people, and it influenced young musical enthusiasts like the Fogarty Brothers of Creedence Clearwater Revival, or Elvis Costello, or Billy Joel, to go on and become musicians themselves too. Just think of the influence of one event on the lives of other musicians and on our lives too. Number three, the Beatles created a huge body of work. Writing one hit song is possible. Writing two or three is a lot harder. Writing 100, well, we don't see that very often. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of things need to happen in order to have a hit. We need talent, timing, luck, a bit of marketing. Many groups and musicians became famous with one song, maybe two, and that's it. Creating a lot of hits consistently is extremely difficult. Think of the group AHA from the 1980s and their song Take On Me. We still hear this song on the radio or Spotify playlists, but you never hear any other song from this group. Think of the guy who made Gangnam Style. The first song was very famous, his second song was a flop. You also find singers who make hits that are all very similar to each other. They find a formula and then they replicate it. Others take music from the past and repurpose it. The song All By Myself actually copies a melody from Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Or some musicians make covers of old songs. There are some great covers, don't get me wrong. Many of them actually improve on the original but they piggyback on a song with which the public is already familiar. Let's come back to the Beatles. They created a huge body of music, somewhere around 200 songs. 27 of these songs were number one hits both in Britain and the US. And this excludes all the other countries, and it excludes all the other songs that were also famous but didn't quite make it to number one. If you pick an album like Rubber Soul, you can pretty much listen to the whole album, not just the songs that were number one hits. If you listen to Abbey Road, you will be especially enjoying the last half of the album with songs like Because, You Never Give Me Your Money, or The End, even though none of those songs ever became hits in their own right. In addition to the number of songs and the number of hits, the songs are very different from each other. It is amazing. Think of the creative variety while maintaining a very high quality of music all along. If the Beatles were a mountain, it would be tall and it would be broad. The Beatles became the benchmark. When some artists make it big, or when they blow their own trumpets, they like to say, oh, I am now more famous than the Beatles. Well, yes, people compare themselves to the Beatles. The Beatles compare themselves to Jesus. And don't get me wrong, this is not about religion. The, com the comment was very controversial and taken out of context. But in a kind of weird way, I think the point stands. A lot of bands compare themselves to the Beatles. Who do the Beatles compare themselves to? In the music books of the future, I'm sure the Beatles will appear alongside the other great musicians in history. And this brings me to the final thought, and a point of great admiration from my side. Considering what the Beatles went through, considering the dizzying heights of their fame, the insanity of Beatlemania, the tremendous pressure they endured with crowds and the press, it is amazing to see they came through on the other side, pretty much unaffected. Just think about how many people become famous only to commit suicide. They cannot withstand the pressure. The Beatles somehow went on this roller coaster. They adjusted, they matured, they even enjoyed it. And then they moved on. Even after the Beatles separated, they still continued writing great songs. Think of Imagine by John Lennon or George Harrison's My Sweet Lord. Paul McCartney had a bunch of other hits with Wings and he continues playing. And Ringo starred pardon the pun, he starred in a 1981 film called Caveman. It is one of the funniest movies, Atuk Aluna Lana. Go and watch it. 
The magic created when the Beatles were together is difficult to replicate. How Lennon and McCartney complemented and tempered each other in their music and their lyrics. How much fun they had when they played. How they did take after take of their own songs until they got it right. They made songs about love, peace and friendship. They brought energy, happiness and a sort of childish freshness to the world. They were the Beatles and that's why I love them. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to press like, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, whatever you want. And I'll see you next time.